wilderness really provides a completion for the experience that we have in America. Independence, self-reliance, ruggedness. Wilderness cuts across a lot of different value structures and value systems of all Americans. And it's a tie that binds everybody together. Wilderness areas are places where wilderness character is preserved. First of all, it's an area that's untrammeled. It's a place that we don't intentionally manipulate the ecosystem, the earth and its community of life. And it's an opportunity to renew your spirit and really pay attention and look around at what's happening in the natural world. But it's not a large opportunity. Only about 5% of the United States is protected as wilderness. And it's extremely important to protect into the future. Shenandoah National Park was established in 1935. We're almost 200,000 acres in size. 40% of that is actually federally designated wilderness. We have 500 miles of trails, of which over 100 miles of that is part of the Appalachian Scenic Trail. The Appalachian Trail is a footpath for those who seek fellowship with the wilderness. It goes through 14 states, six national parks, eight national forests, and depending on how you count it, 27 to 30 federally designated wilderness areas. The wilderness is the best protection for the AT experience. It provides the opportunities for solitude and reflection that the AT was built for. Over the past 10 to 20 years, we're seeing a growth in the outdoor recreation industry, and we love that and we want folks to come, but that's also a difficult thing for the Park Service because the other mandate we have as a stewardship agency is to protect those resources for future generations to enjoy. As you will find in many wilderness areas, one of the biggest threats is just the fact that they're loved to death. So therefore, we have to find the creative ways to adaptively manage and balance out the need for public recreation, but also the care and stewardship of the resource. My name is Jeff Marion. I'm a recreation ecologist. Part of our job is to go into wilderness environments and study the visitor impacts from hiking, camping, horseback riding, other kinds of activities like rock climbing or fishing, hunting. We have a very large four-year study going on the Appalachian Trail currently right where we're investigating trail impacts and the factors that affect trails. For example, how steep is the trail, trail grade, obviously affects how much soil loss you have from a trail. A good focus of our research has always been on sustainability. And through an understanding of the various factors that influence the impacts, you know, whether it be trail impacts or, or camping impacts or impacts to wildlife and water resources, we can work with managers to achieve greater sustainability. We can have more people with less impact on the environment. I think one of the ways that scientists and science can help us address impacts are identifying the impacts, first of all, is doing research using good baseline data. Once we establish a, a baseline, we can test against that baseline using some well-established scientific methods. What's important from a scientific standpoint is to identify when we might have to take some kind of an action or to preserve some aspect of wilderness character. The scientists who work on these questions, they do help to provide us with a variety of tools that can help us to address these in the least impacting way. Yes, I mean, that's not a very sustainable hammock camping spot. It has been completely trampled out of all vegetation, and it's a pretty steep slope, and it's reasonably close to the creek. But they could turn that into a side hill site. And I think those will be our recommendations. That it kind of can inform how we work to spread hikers out through some sort of passive management systems, whether it's campsite design or how we space campsites out or how we ask people to voluntarily register for campsites. Those types of things help us manage wilderness as it was intended to be managed. In our very small field of recreation ecology research, we're making our own advances in knowledge that will help to inform an improved, more sustainable management of wilderness. So it's, it's a partnership between wilderness science and scientists and the managers. And it's through that collaboration, that partnership, that will achieve the best possible management of wilderness for those future generations. Okay.
Our job is to preserve wilderness character, and that includes preserving the level of solitude and primitive recreation that was occurring in the area at the time of designation. Many BLM areas, when they are first designated as wilderness, have very light use, and so solitude is easily found. What happens when visitation increases? We need to establish what an appropriate threshold is. At what point has outstanding opportunities for solitude been lost? That's probably the top of that ridge. We're evaluating a wilderness therapy program. And the exciting thing for me as a scientist here is that they've been practicing what we call dispersed or pristine site camping. Every night, they've been told to go out and camp at a pristine site that's not been used before. And so it's an opportunity for us to go out and study how well are they doing that? You know, are they able to truly leave no trace of their visit? We're walking around looking for traces that have been left behind. This particular campsite is located in an area that has a lot of cryptogram. It's a living crust that, that is easily damaged by foot traffic and it, and it recovers fairly slowly. Oh, this, one there. this one right in crypto soil. Yeah, they built it in crypto soil. So when you're out and you leave sort of an art object like this on the landscape, it's going to persist for decades if no one tears it apart. It just lessens other people's perceptions of naturalness and wilderness when you see permanent art on the landscape like this. Ah, there we go. It's like maybe a tuna fish bag inside of a plastic Ziploc. So they tie their tarps up with parachute cord. And we often find parachute cord like this just hanging from uh, limbs that they... Apparently, I don't know, they just cut it and leave it. Here's um, a pair of socks. <laughs> You know, you might ask, why is this really important? You know, why do we really care about these barely there trace impacts in the wilderness? If you're looking at one occurrence of, of one of these groups out there leaving behind a trace, like some rock art or, or improperly disposed human waste, or even a, ro a rock fire pit, in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not a very pressing management issue for land managers that manage wilderness. Uh, but when you take the millions and millions of people who are out there year after year, it can be cumulative. And if you have large numbers of people out there not practicing pristine site camping well and leaving lots of traces, other people who follow will come out to those locations expecting pristine conditions. And when they see a, an old campfire ring or some rock art or some improperly disposed human waste, the quality of their experience is going to be degraded. Um, the next dot down has trash and holes dug up. Oh. Our wilderness research here is helping to inform managers and, and visitors on how we can do that better. How can we go out and, and visit these very remote, pristine portions of our wilderness and leave no trace of our visit um, so that others who come after us, whether it be next year or 100 years, don't see any evidence of, of our visits. I mean, that's our goal. Good science is, is actually required. To, to make your decisions, whether it be natural resources, cultural resources, wilderness character, visitor use, uh, they all work together to help balance this complex issue, which is recreation in wilderness lands. I think we need to think long and hard about those future generations. I mean, that's, you know, really what we're, we're hoping to achieve here is, is a sustained, long-term protection of wilderness. And research absolutely can help managers do that job better.